What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So we're gonna check out what made Roman Reigns the biggest star in wrestling. Now, I've been trying to check this video out for the past couple weeks now. Um, it's just been a lot of stuff that's been going on, a lot of other videos that I had to end up checking out before this one and, you know, just trying to get all the content out as soon as possible. But finally, I've had time to sit down and actually check this out, man. I I know this is going to be a good one because, you know, Roman Reigns, despite, you know, the criticism that a lot of us have for him not being around as much as a lot of us would have wanted, still... He definitely carried WWE for the past four years, ever since 2020 of him returning back as a heel. He has been, without a doubt, whether he's been there as much as not later on in his legendary run, um, he has been the best part of WWE. He has been the guy leading the industry, not just WWE, wrestling as a whole. He was the guy that was the number one guy in wrestling. And I still think to this day, I think a lot of people would consider him the number one guy in wrestling, even though he's not the champion. That's the type of work, the type of character work, the type of stories they were telling with him. He was killing it. So we're going to check out what made Roman Reigns the biggest star in wrestling, man. Uh, should be a very interesting one. Appreciate all love and support. Let's get right into this one. I'm looking forward to it, man. One, two... When Roman Reigns returned in the summer, the summer of 2020, it marked a new era for the character, one which fans had been begging to see for quite some time, as Reigns would embark on the greatest run of his career to date. But this yep. video will highlight the very best of Roman's run as the head of the table. We'll break down what it meant to become the tribal chief of his Samoan dynasty, and how it created one of the great wrestling storylines. We'll study Roman's character and what this meant for everyone else. Today, we look at what made Roman Reigns' bloodline run so iconic. Mm -hmm. Before we take a deep dive into the tribal chief and the bloodline, let's first cover the association that kicked things off. When Roman aligned with Paul Heyman, it set the tone perfectly for what was to come, as Heyman played a key role in getting Reigns over as a heel. The main theme when it comes to this version of Reigns is loyalty, something Heyman epitomized as the wise man and special counsel for Roman. Pointing your accusatory fingers at me for corrupting him. It's him. So good. Corrupting me. So Paul good. demonstrated his loyalty in many ways, not just from the way he spoke and offered wisdom to Reigns, but through the little things Heyman did, from the way he held the title, to his expert pass of the microphone, the energy is palpable. Oh, what a pass. or when he called Roman on the phone. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Call Roman Reigns. And this is true. <laughs> <laughs> to his brilliant facial expressions in the background of promos or during matches. I am gonna be the one to take him down! A remorseless Paul Heyman's face, oh facial God. expressions are so great, Charlie, bro. To fire up. Oh! Wait, Look at that. <laughs> That's so fast. Despite not being the main focus of the scene, Heyman was always reacting. Mm -hmm. Edge, spare, spare, cover it. Edge, spare, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Cody for the win, for the title, for the title, oh my god. It was clear Paul was absolutely worshipped by the tribal chief, but Heyman's ultimate test of loyalty came during Reigns' rivalry with Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Paul had been by Brock's side for so long, including the numerous times Lesnar previously stood across the ring from Reigns. Heyman had to betray Rock to prove he was fully committed to Roman and the bloodline. Live television, every Friday night. Fears you. I, I'm under the impression he wouldn't dare show up at Extreme Rules. No, not that Brock Lesnar is Roman Reigns. And Paul Heyman is once again a very integral part of this run working even more because Roman has a voice now, even though as time went on, he really didn't need a voice. Like 
He was Roman when he came back, had to enlist the help of Paul Heyman, the guy that had been the advocate for Brock for so long, the guy that Roman had been feuding with for so long. He finally enlisted in his help, and he was the voice for Roman. He was the, the wise man for Roman. And slowly but surely, Roman started having this type of confidence on the microphone and and what he said and how he was delivering it to the point where you didn't need Paul for that specifically but he was there when Roman wouldn't be there to say the things that need to be said but ultimately he plays a very important part in all of this working because he he's kind of the catalyst to kind of let the fans know visually this is something different. Roman Reigns has aligned himself with Paul Heyman. We're not going to get the same guy we've been getting for so many years under Vince McMahon. Even though technically Vince McMahon kind of, you know, went along with this during the pandemic ever, but we're not getting the same Roman Reigns we had been getting up to that point. I mean, you beat Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. This is when Brock Lesnar usually takes six to nine months off and leaves everybody else hanging which is a life that you rescued me from my tribal chief which is why i love you my tribal chief. <laughs> are, you right? are you kidding me and roman reigns in the superman punch while paul previously portrayed himself as the advocate and hype man for previous clients with reigns it was different since Heyman had history with the family going back years on tv paul and brock's pairing was always portrayed as a business association Heyman had double crossed lesnar before after all but with the mm -hmm. wise man and the tribal chief it goes beyond just business you could tell how much respect and admiration paul has for roman and the family demonstrating the type of loyalty that is rewarded for generations to come my tribal chief I am the wise man. Who's the main event around here? You. <laughs> you are. Wise man. It's my tribal chief. Who is the tribal chief? You, you are, are my tribal <laughs> chief. Do I got to open my own doors now? No, no, no. My, uh, my, my apologies, my tribal chief. <laughs> wise man. Yes, my tribal chief. Is it not WrestleMania season? It is WrestleMania season, my tribal chief. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief. <laughs> I acknowledge you, my tribal chief. <laughs> Bruh, <laughs> tell you, Paul Heyman and the glazing he always did for Roman Reigns. You don't need a girlfriend if you got someone like that, right? <laughs> Have him in the castle, pissing out, then out of the castle, pissing in. I love you, wise man. I love you too, my trouble too. <laughs> Look at I thank this. you for your honesty. <laughs> This version of Roman Reigns was exemplified by the way he treated and spoke to others. Roman's mm -hmm. character was tired of being humble. It was head and shoulders above the rest. He wanted to be treated and told as such, but Reigns also wanted to tell this to everyone else. This allowed Reigns to find his voice and tap into a promo style that just wasn't possible due to the way he was booked mm -hmm. before. When you prep at a 12, the 10 comes easy. You mm. understand my position, Jimmy? I'm Jake. It doesn't matter anyways. This is so cold. Excuse me, Roman, I'd like to get a word with you. I thought you would. <laughs> Wait, promo. It's, it's, it's funny. It's, I'm funny to you. Like a tribal clown. And I whooped Brock Lesnar so bad he's tweeting now. Good God. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be running around here for two years in your wife's clothes and say you're the guy. <laughs> Start of the end. <laughs> You can't even get the mic to work. I mean, come on. Bro, that's, I ain't gonna lie to you. When Roman starts hitting that condescending laugh, dog, that shit is so fucking funny. I ain't gonna lie to you. <laughs> Seamus Mike was, wasn't working. And nigga said, you can't even get the mic to work. Like, come on, bro. You, you're not even on my level. When I think Cesaro had came out there. Oh, my God. Which was a fantastic match he had with Roman. Cesaro came out there. And this nigga Roman said, cut this bum's music. Cut his bum ass music. <laughs> bro, Roman, he was killing it, dog. <laughs> He's such a condescending asshole. Like, bro, he looks at you like 
Come on. I'm me, you're you. What are we doing? Stop. One vacation and SmackDown sucks. It's almost as bad as Raw. As the head of the table, he was free to roast and talk down to people with great effect. And what? Cosplay a redneck version of my cousin? <laughs> what happened? You ran away, you started a company and a promotion that you couldn't get over in. Your daddy's not here anymore. This is cold. This is cold, bro. He a buried Austin Theory. You just sign it without even reading it. What's wrong with you, man? It was especially interesting <laughs> to see Roman lose his cool, whether uh -huh. by scolding and bossing others around or through unleashing anger. Do you think you're me? Do you think you're me? Do you think you're me? Do you want to be me? Do you want to be the tribal chief? This ring is yours when you win the cup. Otherwise, go and do jackass shit. <laughs> and Bo, when he would get mad, like that burst of rage would just come out of nowhere like it would it would be very subtle you do them face twitches and then when he finally just explode with rage the shit would be like oh whoa you know what i'm saying oh shit you good Roman? like it, it was it's quite terrifying but it adds a layer of depth to his character like he explodes and when he does it could be problematic man <laughs> personal because it's always been personal mm -hmm. what you do this is the respect you show me and no solo oh why would that man play games with me why would you play games with me <laughs> you're only the wise man when i say you're the wise man <laughs> here we go The tribal Cold chief's trash talk visual. didn't even stop when the bell rang. Mm -hmm. Roman took full advantage of there being no fans in attendance during 2020 and 2021. Reigns talked us through the match. It added such a unique element to his presentation. It helped further get him over as a heel while greatly adding to the story being told. And he does again. And your grandfather's dead. Oh, it's Papa's up there. Got a lot of responsibility. Oh, bro. When I got it, you don't get out. You feel me? <laughs> this bike script right here. Oh, yeah, that's DB style. Yeah, that's DB style. Now, come on, Brooklyn. I'll come out there. Smack, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this, I love that. Some people say, oh, he talks too much while wrestling. No, this works with him because he's an asshole. He's talking trash to his opponents. He's being disrespectful, which makes you as a fan watching on television now you you can get even more invested because now you want to see this guy lose. You want to see him get his comeuppance because he's really talking shit. He knows the cameras can hear him. He's half the time he wants the camera to pick up. Hey, come here, listen here. I think he I think he was facing John Cena at one point. He was like, "Hey, we gonna send his ass back to Hollywood." You know, like he was he was talking his talking. I, I think it adds that layer of, of great heel work. To his uh, character, man. I'm squeezing the life out of him. My arm is an extra big. Movie executives, Hollywood, mm -hmm. I apologize, but I'm gonna hurt this man. Who you think Ooh. you are, huh? You be tough right now. Oh, God, are they good? Oh, that's Randy Orton right there. That is where Randy. That is Randy Orton. That's that little back, Randy. That's oh, you my God. <laughs> Roman's matches with Jey Uso were storytelling masterpieces for this reason. The incredible character mm -hmm. work and sheer emotion portrayed was pure cinema. So Your good. Go all the way out, you know? Your cousin is out! Your cousin is out! You're out! You're out. You're out. You're out. You're out. <laughs> Tell the whole world that I am the head of the table, the tribal chief, the boss. I'll grab that lady's left slipper over there and slap you across the head to Woods! Let's go fix everything Jay messed up. Come on. 
Let's go. Another way Roman's character work greatly improved was through his facial expressions. Mm -hmm. There were times when he showed intense emotion like we just saw. Yep. But most of the time, it was those slight gradual changes in expression that really told the story. Reigns could say a lot without over-emoting. Mm -hmm. Say I don't give a damn what the child say! This was such a fucking great segment, bro. Look, the camera set up, the positioning, and his facial expression. He didn't say a single word. He just looked up. And everybody hit the oh, we, you know, us watching live, we was like, oh, because you knew some shit was about to pick up. This is, this is, this is why he, I said he was leagues abound of leagues and bounds above everybody else in a sense of just getting it. And this is the guy we've been watching for so long that didn't really have it yet or kind of was being hindered by what. Vince and management want him, wanted him to do, but when he got a chance to really be himself and just tap into that, fantastic. Even just the small stuff like facial expressions. Just look at the different ways he reacted to being cut off by wrestlers' entrance mm -hmm. music. Roman's face told us exactly what he thought of the person interrupting him and the threat they posed. <laughs> This one was wild, bro. What? He hit, he hit the... Couldn't believe what he saw. We all want to go big. This... Wait a minute. It's the brand new WWE Champion. <laughs> <laughs> this was cold too. This is so cold, bro. So good. Reigns also used it. Seth is just man. Seth and Roman's rivalry will. It's the newer day version of Stone Cold and The Rock in the sense of how personal their story has been how interconnected their story was back in the day this is the generations stone cold and the rock you know some may say it's blasphemy blasphemous for me to compare those rivalries to each other but as a kid as a fan growing up watching this you know who seth is you know who roman is you know how they were especially if you got introduced to them through the shield and over the years watch their separation how everything played out they will always revolve around each other in the sense of being connected to each other in wwe and uh it's, it's dope to see you know i can't wait to see how things play out towards the tail end of their careers and you know we hopefully we do get that one-on-one -on -one match at wrestlemania between these guys at some point man a number of catchphrases and taglines to build his heel character's identity. The signature finger to the sky told us Reigns and the Bloodline were the ones, while everyone else were the twos, as they like to put it. We the ones, right? Yeah, we the ones. Ones. Bloodline. Cause you the twos, and we, we the ones. Then as soon as Roman got on the mic, he demanded everyone acknowledge, acknowledge him as the him. tribal chief. Then acknowledge your tribal chief. Fall in line and acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. The booze. Acknowledge me. These people, these are all my people because they acknowledge me. <laughs> Acknowledge. It worked. New Orleans. Acknowledge me. Now the whole world can acknowledge me. You there. At home. <laughs> Sitting at home. <laughs> acknowledge me. We 
<laughs> this is so cold. This is so Acknowledge cold. me. Acknowledge me. In his promos, Roman spoke about the island of relevancy, the idea that the bloodline are the ones with the gold, the be all and end all of the industry, and the perfect representation of the Samoan island family heritage, of which the tribal chief rules over. I'm the tribal chief around here, the head of the table. Suplex City doesn't exist, this is the island of relevancy. <laughs> Roman also placed himself on a pedestal much higher than his opponents, greatness on a different level that he referred to as God Mode. I'm the last needle mover because I am constantly operating at God Mode. Reigns was the needle mover that smashed everyone put in his way, something he made sure to tell us. I'm gonna smash you. I'm gonna smash you. I'm gonna smash you. I'm gonna stack you. I'm gonna pin you. I'm gonna smash him. I'm gonna stack him. I'm gonna pin him. One, both. two, three. I told the whole world what I say. Smash him. Stack him. Pin him. One, two, three. If y'all keep wetting me, I'm gonna smash all <laughs> of y'all. I would smash Steve Austin. Tonight's the first night that I get to see Brock Lesnar face to face since I smashed him in Madison Square Garden. I'm your tribal chief. I'm the head of the table because I smashed everyone. Let's now look at those who Roman <laughs> smashed on the way to his record-breaking multi-year world title reign. It all started when Reigns first returned uh -huh. in the summer of 2020, where Roman won the universal oh. title. Reigns saw off the likes of Daniel Bryan and Edge before encountering his old rival, John Cena. This would be a real test to see how much better this version of Roman Reigns truly was. Roman may have defeated Cena in their previous clash in the ring, but John absolutely destroyed mm -hmm. Reigns on the microphone. I blame you. I'm still here because you can't do your job. This time round, however, Roman was on a mission to verbally punish Cena. It's like missionary position every single <laughs> <laughs> 20 plus years of missionary might have been good enough for you, but it wasn't good enough for Nikki Bella. He start. He, he was, he was, he found his voice. He found he was more comfortable. He was more lax. He was cool without trying to be cool because he was himself. Like John is himself when he's out there on the microphone. Roman had reached that point. He knew who he was. And that's all that matters. He didn't have to have a script to tell him who he was because he was portraying exactly what he should have been portraying all this time. See, see not in the ring. We've already seen Mr. Missionary tonight. <laughs> Did John Cena write that promo for you, huh? Are you going to say the same stuff? <laughs> Reigns proved how far he'd come by putting down Cena. Roman Reigns with a spin! And just like that, Roman Reigns will repay! But there would be yet another old adversary next on the horizon. Roman and Brock Lesnar had traded a number of wins in their previous encounters, mm -hmm. but this time it was completely one-sided. With the help of the wise man, Heyman, Reigns buried Brock once and <laughs> for all, to the point where now, Roman also held the WWE title, becoming the undisputed WWE Universal Champion. It was an old friend that really put Reigns' entire story arc into perspective. When Seth Rollins turned yep. on Roman and the Shield in 2014, it set something off in Roman that ultimately manifested into the character he became today. But I'll never forgive you for what you did to us. Mm -hmm. I hate you. Reigns never wanted to be betrayed like this again, so he demanded unquestioned loyalty from the bloodline. Rollins used this And this is one of the things, it's such a great callback to this year's WrestleMania. His hatred for Seth was so strong, even after all these years, he could not pass up on the opportunity to hit him with a steel chair and that ultimately cost him the match that's what that's why it makes this whole thing so fantastic seth saying cody let me be your shield and that's exactly what he ended up being he ended up being the shield for cody because roman's hatred was so strong for him seth knew that knew per storyline seth knew if there's an opportunity where Roman will pass up on potentially winning 
the championship just to destroy me, he will. Because that's how much he hates me. And it works. And in fact, they've kind of weaved it into the story that the reason why we have the Roman we have now is because of what Seth did. Love it. To Gaines Reigns, as well as the fact Roman had never beaten Seth when there was a title on the line, something that still hadn't changed after this feud. Tear to the spine! Mm -hmm. I'm buggied by Reigns! He deserves this! Mm -hmm. He deserves this! I don't love him, man! Rollins didn't leave with the championship due to the DQ decision, but he did win the mental game. Fans would have been happy to see Roman's title reign end against any of the next three challengers. Yeah. However, the story being told did not call for this to happen. The likes of Cody Rhodes couldn't finish his story until Roman Reigns and the Bloodline finished theirs. The Bloodline story was the heartbeat of WWE programming for years. And the it Anna still White is. Family had stood <laughs> side by side many times before in wrestling, but never were they together in such a dominant faction like this, steeped and built up the back of their storied family lineage. To to understand how the group and its run brought Reigns to the next level, we need to tap into the true lore of the story. The Bloodline celebrates the legacy passed down from the High Chief Peter Maivia to the current head of the table and Tribal Chief Roman Reigns. During his previous run, Reigns struggled to be accepted by the audience, but now as the head of the table, he demanded to be accepted, validated and acknowledged. Even if it meant running through his cousins, the Usos, Roman essentially beat them to the point where they had to acknowledge him. Mm -hmm. Reigns continued to manipulate, corrupt and tyrannize Jimmy and Jay past the point of submission. You could say it was an example of if you can't beat them, join them or Stockholm Syndrome. But it's a lot mm -hmm. more complex than that given the family ties. Not only this, but the subsequent success the Usos achieved from being paired with Roman spoke volumes. Work. Their stock as a team was higher than ever. Plus the feud with Reigns had proven Jay as a single star. While for Roman, the Usos and later their brother Solo Sokoa was a pivotal insurance policy. Their interference in matches, especially Solo's, was what allowed Reigns to hold both belts for so long. <laughs> <laughs> so, as soon as we heard those rules, that there was no rules, we knew the bloodline was going to do something. Solo! No, yeah. Not like this! Man. Sami Zayn's association with the bloodline brought out a different side to Roman. Up to this point, Reigns had been a brutal heel, so to see him smile mm -hmm. and welcome the presence of Sami made for great TV. You are the and then, man, Sami legitimately. Added so much more to the bloodline that no one probably even expected. It's still out of all the story arcs we've had so far with the bloodline, it's still my favorite, bro. Because it's Sammy, this lovable guy wanting to be in a group full of heels, but he's so endearing and so lovable that even the heels ultimately. They they cave into his his niceness, his kindness, bro. And they Sammy's out here legitimately making these guys crack up and break kayfabe because he's so fucking he's fucking he's Sammy. He's hilarious. He's great. It, it was awesome to see that. And then you knew eventually it would all crumble. It was so good, bro. Biggest two of them all, my dog. Doing a little dance, he can't. That's the dance you do. That's, I'm in his head doing the dance. Yeah, right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, 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 there it is. <laughs> how do you, how do you not love Jimmy? He just hasn't been very oozy. Oozy. <laughs> it's because you're not feeling. Oozy. <laughs> it was interesting seeing how other members reacted to Zayn, especially Jay. Yeah. Big. I'll tell you all about it later. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, Jay always stay cranky. He's over there. <laughs> even, even him trying to get Solo to crack is so good, bro, because these guys have been just dominating WWE as the bad guys. But to see them have fun with somebody that you know is not truly a bad guy, but he wants to be a part of it. You wanted to see this. This was, this was peak. Peak SmackDown. This was peak, like, Bloodline stuff, bro. So Zane's good. Had battered and emotionally scarred the Usos to ensure they were loyal and acknowledged him as the head of their family. The complete opposite to how Sammy got in with the group. Zane still had to prove himself multiple times, mm -hmm. but seeing him get so chummy with Jimmy and Roman only made Jay jealous. That's it, Sammy. <laughs> <laughs> it was this I'm sorry that she was all like, this nigga. <laughs> trying to pass the popcorn he passed it to paul we cut back 
this nigga got a bucket of popcorn too. Like, oh shit, this shit good. Oh shit, what's going on about <laughs> this? That's why I said Sammy was great. He was fucking fantastic in this, bro. Battle for acceptance that made Sammy so endearing to the audience. He was so funny and entertaining. He was becoming one of WWE's most popular baby faces. Zayn was on the cusp of being considered family. Spear G. Guillotine. That's right. But he was only ever one mistake away from being admonished by Reigns. To go from honorary Uso to Sami Uso, Zayn had to destroy his former best friend, uh -huh. Kevin Owens. But this was where Sami realized where his true allegiance lied, and that wasn't with Roman and the yeah. bloodline. So go. So. This was so fucking wild. Bro. The fans got what they wanted, S seeing Zayn great, stand up for bro. himself and challenge Reigns for the undisputed title. Bro, this is so good. Sammy came up short. His loyalty was forgotten by Roman and Jimmy, but not by Jay. Jay was won over by Zayn after realizing all Sammy had done for the group. And this once again formed cracks between both mm -hmm. Jay and Jimmy's relationship with Roman until the inevitable occurred. All of this was gold, bro. This is just fucking great. <laughs> Bop! I got you. And I'm out too. <laughs> Jay had shown us he could stand on his own in the past. Could he now do it by defeating Roman to take Reigns' place as the tribal chief? Do you believe in miracles? Cover by Jay! Jay did it! Jay did it! His twin Jimmy would stand in the way of this so he could so protect Jay this, from ever yeah, becoming this like Roman. Didn't make sense either. Time and wise. You and watch you become an egotistical ass like Roman Reigns. Jimmy yeah, and Jay like, didn't immediately acknowledge the tribal chief. Their brother Solo, on the other hand, had shown nothing but unwavering loyalty towards Reigns, the type of which Roman was seeking and demanded from the very beginning. The elders, they may have sent you, but you answer to me now. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief. Enter Solo Sikoa, someone who, like with Paul Heyman, passed his ultimate test. It's why Solo is perhaps the true heir to the tribal chief throne. The next tribal heir, Jimmy! Join me in congratulating Solo. But this remains to be seen as the Bloodline story continues mm -hmm. to be told. I acknowledge you as my tribal chief. Mm, they story, cooking up something, bro. Family and loyalty. To close things, we want to take you back to the two things the tribal chief said during his first signals run. And that's because of how much different these lines hit at this point in time. Why would I want to lessen myself? my legacy my bloodline to be the next john cena when i can be the one and only roman reigns mm -hmm. i take my rightful place at the head of the table believe that we didn't know it and we didn't we didn't but now we do then but these comments would help put in perspective who this man is today now if you enjoyed this video be sure to check this out is great, similar bro. videos on what this is this was fantastic. I love videos like this, man. I'm going to go ahead and give this one a like because it deserves to get one. Y'all make sure y'all go like the video as well. Um, nah, this was fantastic, bro. This is why Roman Reigns is the guy. This is why he has been the guy. And it's, it's truly amazing to have been a part of this journey and a part of this ride for so long. So comment down below. Let me know. What was your favorite moment from the roman reigns tribal chief era of the bloodline when he was the champion what was your favorite moment i know we got some some great moments ahead of us whenever he does return but since he's gone right now what was your favorite moment from roman reigns as the champion as the wwe undisputed champion let me know because there's so many great moments let me know what was your favorite from him so far but i appreciate all love support bro to 150k and i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all next one peace